Day 28 of commit is a peaceful practice. We're going to be taking our time, flowing through some gentle movements, and focusing on deep breaths. Be sure to like and subscribe and stick around to the end for some tips for your practice. Begin standing at the head of your mat in a mountain pose. Arms at your sides, palms facing out as you connect to your breath. Inhale, arms up, taking them together in Kali Mudra, keeping our gaze forward, gentle side bend to the right. And to the left. To center, exhale to a forward fold, bending the knees as much as you like here. Inhale to a halfway lift, flat back, and fold. Plant the palms and step it back to plank. Lower down to your belly and connect your forearms down to a sphinx pose, pointing the toes straight back, keeping the legs lightly engaged. Get long through the back and neck, keeping the shoulders down and away from the ears. Cross your arms and rest your forehead down on your forearms, relaxing the body in a crocodile pose. Once again, deepening your breath. Reach your right hand to foot, drawing it in lightly for a stretch, resting the side of your head down on the left arm. Take your time repeating this stretch on the opposite side, still resting the head down, left hand to foot. Release. Take your time pressing up to a tabletop position, lining yourself up. Begin to flow through cat cow, moving with your breath.
Now you can widen your base a little bit, taking the hands a little forward, knees a little bit back if you like. We're gonna rock the hips back and forth, leaning them back almost to a child's pose, and then sending them forward almost to a cobra pose. Just finding a little bit of extra movement here through the body. Maybe you can begin to play with the position of your pelvis as you round out your back and then move to a back bend in spinal waves. Now maybe we find some circular motions, coming forward with a side bend, coming back on the opposite side, switch directions, creating circles one way, then the other. Or maybe you prefer to continue moving front to back. The choice is yours. Good, let's make our way to an extended puppy pose now. Reaching the arms forward, taking the chest down to the mat, hips up high, stacked over our knees as much as possible. You can rest the forehead down on the mat, or if you're really open, resting the chin down, gazing forward. Staying in this position, but just raising the arms a little, we're going to needle the right arm under the left in a twist, coming to rest on the right shoulder and side of the head. Release to center, needle the left arm under, coming to rest on the left shoulder and side of the head. Releasing the twist, pressing up to table, Draw the right knee forward to a pigeon pose. Toes of the extended leg are pointing straight back. Squaring the hips off to the mat, getting long through the body, we can stay in this upright position or fold over that front leg. Coming out of the stretch, press back to table and send your left leg forward to pigeon. Once again, lining yourself up, option to remain in an upright position or fold over that front leg.
releasing pigeon pose, make your way to seated, legs extended together ahead of you in staff pose. Feet are flexed, toes pointing up, arms down at your sides, connecting the palms down to the mat or the fingertips if you can't reach. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding at the hips to a forward fold. Try to find release in the lower back in this position. If it's tightening up or feels uncomfortable, try to bend the knees slightly or lift your fold a little, holding on to the legs at a higher position. out of the fold, draw the right knee up, hugging the right leg with the left arm, twisting back and gazing over the right shoulder. Keep that right hand close to the body to help us sit up taller. Left foot remains flexed, toes pointing up. Release to center, extend the right leg, draw the left knee in, hugging the left leg with the right arm, we twist and gaze over the left shoulder. Release the twist. Take your time coming down onto your back. Here, raising both legs up to a legs up the wall pose, allowing them to just hang out here. No tension through the legs or the feet, just doing enough to keep them upright. Arms down at your sides. Try to rest the body as much as possible as we focus on deepening our breath. Drawing the knees in to the outsides of our shoulders, grabbing onto the feet in a happy baby pose, getting wide through the sit bones, soles of the feet pointing straight up. Releasing happy baby to a reclined twist, right leg coming to the left side of our mat, extending the right arm out at shoulder level, gazing over the right shoulder. Coming out of the twist, onto your back. Draw the left knee up, extend the right leg. Let's twist over to the right, gazing over our left shoulder this time.
Releasing the twist to center, draw both knees into chest. Hugging the legs firmly, raise the shoulders, taking your nose to your knees in a wind relieving pose. Tucking the chin down towards the chest, pointing through the toes. Release, hands on your knees, rocking a little from side to side. Lower your feet down to the mat, keeping the knees bent. Take the soles of your feet together, dropping your knees out to the side in a reclined bound angle pose. Hands on your belly. Try to release any tension through the hips, allowing gravity to draw the knees down towards the mat. Take the knees together, walk your feet out wide. You can keep your hands on your belly or place them behind your head as we once again focus on deepening our breath here to finish up. Let's talk about the difference between a wind relieving pose and when we're instructed to draw the knees in and rock a little from side to side. So these are two different things. So when we're drawing our knees in and rocking a little bit from side to side, we're giving ourselves a little bit of a massage on the lower back here and we're taking some time to catch our breath and rest before we proceed to the next movement. And then wind relieving pose is an actual pose that has alignment cues just like any other. So wind relieving pose itself helps to stretch the lower back and relieve pressure there. It helps to release tension in the belly and it stimulates the abdominal organs. So let's take a look at that one first. So come down onto your back and we're gonna start with our knees bent, hip apart. Oh my baby. Arms at our side. So we can go into a half wind relieving pose to begin. So what I'm gonna do there is drop my right knee in and extend the left leg out long. But rather than letting it rest there, I'm gonna point through the toes and raise the heel. Good. Now I'm gonna squeeze up and draw my nose to my knee and hold here. I'm releasing all tension in my lower back and I'm not squeezing through the glutes at all. So you would hold here anywhere from 20 seconds to a minute and then we come down. Oh, and then we can switch sides. Again, we float the heel, nose to knee. Good, so that's half wind relieving pose. Full wind relieving pose, we have the heels together, knees together, we draw it in and we hug. And then from here, so I'm getting really wide through the sit bones, that's why they call it wind relieving pose, because if that's gonna happen, this is one of those poses that's gonna happen in. So we're hugging and then we lift nose to knee. So we're getting long through the back of the neck and we're tucking the chin down here. So it's a chin lock and we hold. So starting from 10 to 20 seconds, working our way up to a minute and we come down. So that's our wind relieving pose. So when we're flowing and maybe we're working really hard and we want to take a little bit of a rest between poses or between movements, 
We might want to draw the knees in and rock a little bit from side to side, especially if you've done a bunch of back bends, or we just want a little bit of relief. And so, when you're in this position here, you don't have an extraordinary dip in the back. So we have a neutral spine, the tailbone and the sacrum are connected here, and connected behind the shoulder blades, and maybe there's a little bit of a dip. I can fit my hand under my back here, but that's about it. And maybe you're flush down with the mat and that's where you're comfortable. And the way to know the difference between pelvic positions here is to do tilts. So in this position, so just like if we were gonna go into bridge pose, just tilt your pelvis up and then bring it back to neutral. You can even overextend it to see the difference of when it's really, really bent. And here I can fit my whole arm underneath my back. Okay, so keep doing that and you'll notice that there's these different positions and your back feels much more natural in one of those positions and much more safe. And it's really hard to engage the abdominal muscles and to engage the core if we're leaning the pelvis too far back or tucking too far under. And so tucking under might be something that we want to do before we come up into bridge pose, but then we, we're aligning as we come up. But when we're down on the mat here, if we were to say go into any kind of stretch, straightening out the leg, if we have too much of a dip in the lower back, we've tucked under a little bit too much, we might be straining the lower back here and we might feel a lot of tension that we don't want to feel. So we want to make sure that we have a neutral pelvis, a slight tuck under, and that we feel really strong. We feel like we can tense everything up here. So when we go into a wind relieving pose, we often pick up the lower back here and we like kind of scoop under as we come up here. So when we come back down, if we were to straighten out right away, I, you'll notice I have a really big dip in the lower back. So I need to readjust my pelvis after a wind relieving pose. So if you're moving from one pose to the other, you want to make sure that you're either readjusting your pelvis or that you're just going into a small knee hug, rocking from side to side. So when we say, draw the knees in, let's say we just came down from bridge pose, and we say, draw the knees in, rock a little from side to side. If you hug your knees all the way in as much as you can, you're gonna scoop under here, and we need to be mindful of that and readjust the pelvis before we go into our next move. If you don't wanna have to do that, a really, really good thing to do is just bring your hands to your knees. That's it. Keep your arms straight so we're not scooping and nothing is happening with my pelvic alignment here. I'm just pulling the knees up and then once I'm in this position, I'm going to keep my arms straight and I'm going to use my hands to guide my knees either from side to side or in circles. And if I draw my knees in too close, then my lower back and my sacrum are no longer gonna be connected down onto the mat. But with them connected down to the mat here in this position, I can rock from side to side. And the slower you go and the more heavy you get through that section of the body, the more of a massage you're gonna feel and a release of tension going across the lower back. And you can make circles and take your time and do what feels really good. Maybe the top part of this glute here is really, really tight and you wanna kinda shimmy onto it. So this is something that when we say draw the knees in, rock a little from side to side, this is not a wind relieving pose. So the wind relieving pose was this. We're tight, everything's glued together. But when we're just resting between poses, between transitions, you can do whatever you want. You can just let the feet hang here, guide everything with your hands. And so if there is a difference between the two. One is a pose and one is not. So this here is just a resting position that we can use to release tension in the lower back. So I hope you found some of this useful. I know everybody experiences things and feels things differently. Maybe only some of it was helpful. Maybe all of it was helpful for you. The most important thing is to listen to your body.